everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw black fur in pastels by showing you this pastel portrait I've just completed last week of this beautiful black cocker spaniel. Now before I get onto the fur, I always start off with the eye. This is where that main emotion stems from, so I do want to make sure that I've got that right. My most important element after that is my contrast. So even when I'm starting to build up the eyelid colour here, I'm focusing on my highlights and my shadows. Now what I did for this one here is I have done the entire fur in pastel pencils. I do have my pan pastels that I like to use in most other cases, but for this I just wanted to use something a little bit different and show that you can create exactly the same techniques, the same look, just with pastel pencils. So in terms of the black fur, you'll start to see here that I'm going to be building up my values. Now for me personally, when working on black fur, I like to focus on working from dark to light. I think that this builds up the best amount of realism and more depth. So just as I'm working on the nose here, this is a prime example, the same principles of working from dark to light. You do want to make sure that you're leaving those highlights right till the very last layer. The best way of thinking about it is the fur that you would be able to touch first if you were to stroke this animal, that's what you want to leave until your last layer. So the whiskers, the little eyelashes, the tiny little highlighted details on top of the fur, they do need to be left until that last layer. Now one other thing that I want to mention is your fur length. So your pencil strokes do need to be the right length for the area of the fur that we're working on, that's really important. If we make the pencil strokes too long, that fur is just going to be far too textured. You want to make it look like a longer haired spaniel, so it is about finding a balance. So here you can start to see how I'm building up those layers, but it always starts with a good base foundation. So here I'm mapping in my darkest shadows, I'm filling in my mid-tones, I'm getting a soft transition between those two, and then I'm adding in my details. You'll also notice that as I'm building up and layering this way, I'm capturing that beautiful shine in the coat perfectly. And this is also one of the main things that I want to capture, especially when drawing black fur. Because black fur is very reflective, you're going to have to use other colours as well. So I've got some blues and purples that I'm incorporating into those various layers to again build more depth. So as well as the fur length, you also want to focus on the fur direction. Here on the top part of the head, you saw that it was curving over the top of the eye and then sloping up towards where the top right corner of the portrait would be. That's indicating at the shape of her skull at the top of her head, so that is really important. I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I will link that in the description below if that's of interest. I do also have another tutorial here on YouTube and it is showing in my top tips the processes that I like to use for drawing shiny fur, so I will also link that below as well. So just while I'm building up my values, building up those colours, those beautiful pink and purple reflections in the gum, I'd just like to ask that if this tutorial has been useful so far, if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And if you would like to get notified of the content that I upload here to YouTube, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. I also have lots of tutorials, all in-depth, significantly slower. Most of them are now recorded in real time with a voiceover while I'm working. So it's very step by step. Each process is explained thoroughly and they're all available on my Patreon channel. So if my slower tutorials are of interest, I'll also link that in the description below as well. Now you have seen throughout this portrait here that I've worked in small sections and that's what I'm going to do for the ear. Now spaniel ears are quite tricky because of there's you know, all those overlapping fur sections, you've got that thicker and longer fur texture compared to the face. So this can definitely be one of those elements where it makes us think where do I start? Now because of that, I am going to have this available as a real-time tutorial, this ear, on my Patreon channel. So that I can focus just on this ear and show you exactly how to layer to build up a realistic spaniel ear. Because this, as I said, is something that I do get a lot of questions about, so I want to make sure that I can cover that in depth. Now I do already have a tutorial on Patreon showing you how to draw a tan-coloured spaniel ear. 
but I do know that the black cocker spaniels, because we want to get that shine, can be a little bit trickier. We want to focus on those contrasts as well as that layering process. So this is going to be available very soon on my Patreon channel, showing you how I did that ear. I will make sure to keep all of that footage in real time when it does go live. So onto the body, this is where we're going to be focusing more on that shine. Now as I've said throughout the face, this is what I've also wanted to do, but it's going to be more exaggerated on the body because the fur is much longer. So the process of layering is the same, but I do need to be aware that I have to make sure that I lengthen my pencil strokes. If I don't lengthen my pencil strokes, the fur texture is going to be completely wrong. We'll make it look like the dog has just recently had a haircut, which obviously is not what we want if they do have that longer coat at the time. Now you can really see here the importance of the layering process. It's all about those subtle layers. Now I talk about subtle layers so much in not just my YouTube tutorials, but of course in depth in Patreon. I want to make sure that those subtle layers are building the right amount of depth. Going back to what I've mentioned, if after this current layer I jump straight into my lighter greys or my white highlights, this fur is going to look very flat and two dimensional. I have to build it up slowly. Now what's important to remember is that is the case with any fur colour. It doesn't have to just be black fur, but I do find that when drawing black fur, it has a tendency to look more flat because we think of it as just one colour when it really isn't. Look at how many different pencils I'm using here to capture all those very subtle tonal va variations. And the reason why I say that is because it's very easy when we work on black fur just to notice the very darkest shadows and also the brightest highlights. We seem to then skip past all of those layers in between. Those mid-tone values play a huge part in how much depth we're going to be able to achieve. Now, although I say that it's very easy for us to just notice the darkest colours and those brightest highlights, I do find that we're a little bit anxious and a bit worried about going too dark. So quite often when we're drawing a dog like this with this amount of black fur, that we actually make that dog more of a darker grey rather than black because we're too worried about using too much black and then we can't lighten it up. Now the one thing to remember with that, and I show this perfectly in my top tips for drawing realistic fur, I've got a side by side comparison of what happens when you don't make a portrait dark enough, but you will end up with a portrait that's very flat. It won't actually look as much like that dog as it should. So although we want to make sure that we're building up our values properly, we still do have to make sure that those black and darkest shadows are really dark. Otherwise, it is going to look very two dimensional. So going back to one of the most important elements here of the fur direction, just look at how much I'm curving my pencil. So this is one element that I do focus a lot on my Patreon tutorials because everything is so slowed down, it's often in real time. You can see where I'm holding the pencil, how I'm holding the pencil and how I'm moving that pencil. Even down to how sharp that lead is, all of these things come into play depending on the type of detail and fur texture that I'm drawing. So because I do feel that that's really important, I make sure to cover all of that in depth at the time in my Patreon tutorials. One element here on the front of the leg, look at how I've shortened my pencil strokes right on that middle highlight at the front of her leg. That there is really important, it's a key indicator there of how I've changed that fur texture. If I'd have kept my pencil details as long as the fur on her body at the top section of her chest, that leg would look just far too fluffy, like she hasn't had a haircut in a very long time. So it's about finding a balance between the right texture, the pencil length, the amount of pressure you're putting on that pencil, because that will dictate how thick or how thin your line is. All of these things do have to come into consideration when we're trying to build up that realistic fur texture. And I'm working on the back leg and the tail here. And one thing that I want to point out is how that fur direction changes so much. If I hadn't have got the fur direction accurate here, it wouldn't look like her back leg. It would just look like a very random section of something else. It just wouldn't look real. So the fur direction here, how it changes so quickly is really important. And again, this is why I do think it's best to work in small sections, only focus on one or two square inches at a time. It will stop any one element from becoming too overwhelming. But I do personally find that I'll end up with something far more realistic and closer to that reference photo. 
And here is a photograph of my finished portrait. Now I am going to leave this YouTube tutorial at this stage because I did want to just focus and run through a couple of tips on drawing black fur. But if you would like to see how I drew the grass of her portrait here, that is available on Patreon. So it's all as a real time tutorial, very step by step. I show you every single detail, all of the layers. There is no secrets, nothing is missed out or sped up. So if you would like to see that, as I've said, I will link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can and as I've said if you did find this useful I really would appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up it makes a huge difference. As always thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week.